Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. Well, hello, and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm just so excited that I'm able to come back. God is such a good God. I can smile again. Can you believe that? We know that every good and perfect gift comes from God. We know that he gives us the ability to do whatever we do. And I'm not going to talk a long time because I'm very excited. I have a young lady that's going to be talking with me today. We have something in common. We did... um, uh, what did we do? What was that called that we did in Jackson, in Madison, not in Madison, uh, a little while ago? Yes, that uh, was our association your where association, you came and talked to and us. And I came and she sang, and I'm telling you, the people from upstairs at the hotel came down to hear her sing. She has a beautiful voice, but she's also a woman of God. She's woman, a woman of the word. She's a theologian. Her husband was a pastor, and I want to introduce her before we get started today. Her name is Catherine Denise Armstrong Heron, and she has released her debut album, God Never Fails. I like the, I like the title of that, God Never, Never Fails. Fails. And it came out in 2013. As a gospel recording artist, Catherine has used her gifts of song, her gift of song as a ministry. Her versatility involves traditional, contemporary praise and worship, and a little bit of country. We don't have too many black women singing country, do we? And her uh, her inspiration and unique style comes from watching her late mother who dedicated her life to singing praise to God. And I understand she had a beautiful voice. Yes, she did. She yeah. died in church singing. Died in church singing. Age of 27. Wow. 27 years old. Yes. We're going to talk about all of that in just a few minutes. But before we talk about that, I want to share a scripture with you. Those of you who watch me often, you know that Gary passed away And I've been dealing with things and I've been praying and God has been strengthening me. But he woke me up the other morning with the scripture and the scripture that he woke me up with was Psalms 121. And this actually is a scripture that my mom used to tell everybody she saw to read. If she got on the airplane, she told the attendant to read it. If she was in the grocery store, she'd tell the cashier, baby, when you go home, read Psalms 121. And she said, that is insurance on your life, just like you have car insurance on your car. So I want to share that before we start talking. Is that okay? That's fine. And I, I didn't wear my glasses today, but I guess I can see it. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. That speaks volumes, doesn't it? It sure does. It sure does. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to share. Somebody might need to read that scripture. That might be for somebody who's watching this program. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about when did your husband uh, pass away? He passed away April 19th of 2019. 2019. It's one of the first that um, passed away of this COVID. Mm Mm-hmm. How important it is for us to continue to do the work that God has called us to do in spite of what we're going through. Or should we just take a break and just say, we'll come back later? No, I think I believe and I know for myself now that God has a mission for all of us. 
And even though trials and tribulations and even the loss of, of loved ones come into our lives, he already had told us that we weren't going to be here to stay. But his work continues to go on. He said the vineyard is plentiful, but the workers are few. So we have to continue the work. Got to continue to do the work that God has called yes. us. And do you think that helps us to uh, cope better with problems when we continue Oh yes. Doing the work that God has called us to do. Oh yes. Oh yes. When after 45 years of marriage and 48 years with this one man, it has been a, a different um, trial. It's been a different uh, season. So for me, I stay busy doing God's work and that keeps and comforts me. And it also lets me know that God is still in control. Yes. Just like we're here right now filming this program. It gives me a sense of, 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 need, of need for doing things that God has for me to do, not just sitting down doing nothing, right. you know. Yes. He needs me in the vineyard. That's right. And somebody who's watching need to hear this, what we have to say, because we're not the only one that's going through this. A lot of people oh, are yes. going through this. And some people are saying, you know, I've read the word. I have gone to church. I have... Uh, prayed, but nothing is changing. What would you say to those people? Stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. God will show up when he knows that you're ready for the job that he has for you to do. And so we have to continue to do the works. Even if we don't feel like doing it, press your way through. Keep pressing forward and, and do the work that God has for us to do because once this life is over, we can't do any more work. That's right. And we don't we don't stop because it's, 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 it's inconvenient. Right. We have to do what God tells us to do. There were people in the Bible who went through tests and trials and they would. There were many people. It wasn't death, but there were certain things they asked of God. And he told them to do something that didn't sound like it was, you know, we would say, well, that sounds strange. Remember the, the man who was blind? Oh, yeah. He oh, told yeah. him, he said, put, he put clay on his eyes and go oh, wash yeah. in the pool of Siloam. That's right. But even, what happened? Even Jonah. Yeah. When, when, when the Lord told Jonah to go to Nineveh, and I really couldn't blame Jonah. Nineveh was not a, a pleasant place to go to. There were heads that lined up the city in, in Nineveh. But God had a purpose for Nineveh, for Jonah. And because he ran, he, he kept running and running and kept going down and down. When God has a plan on your life, whether you want to do it or not, he's going to stay after you until you walk in what he has asked you to do. So behind every act of obedience, there's a reward, isn't there? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's very much so a reward. God has blessed me even in the death of my husband. God surely, he's still blessing me. Uh, my children are healthy. I'm healthy. I haven't missed a meal. That's how healthy I am. <laughs> haven't missed a meal. And even though I get lonely, God is even there to husband me, to comfort me, to let me know that I'm still one of his. And if you read, um, I think it's Psalms 58. It talks about, you know, being a widow. Yes. And, yes. and somewhere in the Bible, it talks, it talks about he'll be a husband for the widow. That's right. That's right. We have to put our priorities in the order that God wants us to put them in. That's right. And stop trying to figure out, Lord, why? You yes. know, and just move on. Keep moving. Yes. As long as water keep moving, it won't become stagnant, will it? That's right. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you know, to be honest, when my husband passed away, I, I got a little angry with God because we had prayed and prayed and I said, Lord, I prayed and you said anything we ask in your name, it shall be done. I said, why didn't you heal my husband? He said, I did heal him. I just didn't heal him in the way you wanted me to heal him. Wow. Gave but him he healed him. Healing. And that's I had to go back and say, well, Lord, I trust you. Mm. Mm. Um. There are people now that are facing things and they are angry. Mm -hmm. You know, people, some people lost their jobs. Some people lost loved ones and some people lost so many different things and they were pinned in the house, isolated for two years. Oh, yeah. 
and they don't know what to do with themselves. What would you say to these people? I would say as we are transitioning um, into back into society, find your place back in the church, even if you have to get online and with the church. You see what the devil thought he was bringing to our worst parts. It only came out for our good. Technology is so uh, advanced now that we have church through the Internet. We have church through the phones. There's a way that we can always do something for someone else. Um, the Bible says in an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So we need to stay busy on God's program. Mm -hmm. Just like even in the death of your husband, you kept going. You mm -hmm. kept moving forward. The program kept moving mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. We have to keep going. Put one step in front of the other. We are in a new season and God has he has already promised us that he will give us new blessings every day. In order to get those new blessings, we got to get up, wash up and move forward. We have to. And you and I commend you for doing that because you kept yeah. going as well. I mean, if I hadn't, it would have been hard for me to come back. Right. And I know that my purpose is to do what I'm doing. Right. And I know that's what my husband would want me to do. Exactly. And so you just have to keep going. You have to keep pressing. Now, sometimes when we're going through things, God will tell us stuff to do again, going back to what I just said. And it doesn't make a lick of sense to us. Like God, sometimes he tells me, just praise me. That's just right. worship me. Mm -hmm. Just tell me, thank you. Mm -hmm. And you don't feel like it, but you don't. You, you still do it because you obey God. Right, right. And when you do that, I want you to talk about what does that do for your innermost being when you when you sacrifice to do that? Well, when you get out of self and you you forget about your your the carnal part of you. And once you start praising God and, and, and giving him thanks and turn on the television, put on uh, um, some gospel music. It will take you into another mold in life. It will take you, you will take you out of that moment of depression, that moment of not wanting to do into a moment of feeling revived. Yes. And, and, and getting up and saying, you know, I think I want to do something else. Right. I want to go do something for someone else. Right. So we just, you know, it's not always easy. No, it's not. It's not always easy, mm -hmm. but it is attainable. You can do you can it. You can do it. You can, you can do, do it. it. That's what I do. I turn my music up high mm -hmm. and I just blast the room with that good gospel yes, music. Yes. And somebody, every time I do that, somebody going to beat my phone and I have to, you know, get off for a minute, but I go back to it. Mm -hmm. But it really lifts my spirit. Right. You know, David used music. Oh, yeah. For deliverance. Yes. David yes. was a praiser and a worshiper. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what went on in his life, he still got up and praised God. That's right. And that's what we have to do. We do. We, we have to. Paul said, I press towards the mark. Yeah. We have to press toward that mark. Got to keep pressing. Life still goes on. It does. Because our husbands are no longer with us don't mean that we're supposed to shrivel up and die. That's right. We have to keep pressing towards the mark because just like they went on one day, we're going to have to go on. Right. And God is going to ask us, now, what did you do with that time? Right. Did you use it wisely? Mm -hmm. Did you do something for me? Or did you sit there and mourn okay. all the time? You can't do it. And we're going to take a break. But... I asked the Lord when this happened, I said, God, I know I'm going to grieve, but don't let me take on the spirit of grief. Yes. 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 Now I'm going to pause here and we have a good surprise for you today. This woman sings. She sings. She sings. She knows how to sing. <laughs> and so before we come back for the second portion, she's going to do a song for us. So stay tuned. We will be back. If you are being blessed by this program, we need your financial support at this time. Please consider becoming a partner or making a donation to this ministry. Donations can be made using PayPal at Hannah Hopkins Ministries or by mailing your donation to P.O. Box 17405, Hattiesburg, Mississippi 39404. We appreciate your financial support. 
please pray about being a part of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ during this crucial time by making your donation today. If you have a prayer request, please call us at 1-800-305-1928. If you don't get an answer, please leave your name and number and someone will call you back. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful Oh yes you have And all my life you have been so so good With every breath that I am able and I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights you are there like no other I know you as a father I know you as a friend and I will of the goodness of God. Oh, cause all my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your you have cause all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God oh cause all my
I don't have to ask you. I just know that you were blessed by that beautiful music with that beautiful voice. Now, if you want her to come to your event to perform, we're going to try to put something on the screen before we go off today. Because somebody heard that and they're going to say, how can I get her to come and <laughs> sing for me? Um, and what I like about your singing is it comes natural. You don't have to push. It just comes natural. And your song, The Goodness of God, and you talked about your goodness is chasing after me. Wow. Talk yes. about that. Yes, God's goodness is, is truly chasing after me. And I've experienced that in this year and a half uh, since my husband has been gone. God's goodness is just chasing after me. And it seems recently doors of opportunity are just opening up. And God is just telling me, I got work for you to do. You just need to keep walking and walk into the work that I have for you. And that is amazing. Yes, it is. I'm so grateful. It's not about me. It's all about God. Mm -hmm. I'm just a vessel being used by God. And so I always try to remember that I'm truly just a vessel. And as I continue to walk this walk, I want to work. My husband used to say, while we're waiting, mm -hmm. let's put a, 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 a napkin over our arm and wait as we're waiting for the Lord. Wait on others. Wait on others. As we're waiting for right. the Lord. Now, we, we have another couple of questions, but we don't want to run out of time because we want you to do another song at the end. Is that okay? That's fine. Uh, one question I had for you is, how important it is to fellowship with other people during these times? Oh, my goodness. That is so important. I am so grateful. Hattiesburg was all there with me during this time. Both me and my husband had COVID, but I... I was just so determined to get the house ready for him to come back until I didn't realize I really had COVID because mm -hmm. I was busy trying mm -hmm. to do what I needed to do to bring mm -hmm. him home. Mm -hmm. But so many has raveled around me, have come to my rescue, and they're still there. So I thank Hattiesburg and surrounding areas. Well, let me put my little punch in there. I thank Hattiesburg, too. Hattiesburg did not let me down. I thought Hattiesburg didn't like me as well as they do, but Hattiesburg oh, we loves love me. you. Yes, we do. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Hannah Hopkins. Oh, yeah. We know Hannah Hopkins. Well, we love you. you. Thank you. I need that right now. Now, you have another song that you're going to do for us, right? Yes. What's the title of that song? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Yes. Okay. We want to listen to that one. Okay. Okay. Come, come, come to Jesus, come. He is waiting with arms wide open, so come, just come, oh. to call on your name. Something happens, Something happens when I call your name. It's Jesus. Oh yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Something happens when I call your name. 
I called him Jesus. How I love to call your name. All of my healing happens when I call your name. Healing. Healing. He's a healer. all the time we have for this but I just want to say I want you to come back yes ma'am all right yes and until this time next time this is Hannah Hopkins with lifting you higher TV ministries saying you be blessed <laughs>